Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about balancing the red Komodo with the original Ronin S. Um, this is not the S2. Um, I've seen a lot of videos out there that are about the Komodo with the S2. Um, and I think the S2 is an incredible gimbal and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, but I already own the original Ronin and I just, I it does the job. And I didn't think that it was worth uh, upgrading to the S2 um, when I have something that already kind of works. Maybe one day I'll upgrade, but for now, uh, this works just fine for me. Um, but when I was uh, trying to balance the Komodo, I ran into a couple issues when I was balancing it. Um, now, a lot of videos that I've seen with people balancing the Ronin, um, with, or the Komodo with the Ronin, is that they use the tiniest lenses known to man. Um, and, and some of those lenses are really great. Like a lot of the Leicas are very, very small, very compact, and that works great. Um, but for someone like me that uses more Canon glass, um, specifically, you know, like the Sigma 18 to 35 or the Canon 100 mm macro, um, lenses like that are a lot harder to balance because they're a lot heavier and they're a lot, um, they're longer. And so the camera is more front heavy. Um, and what happens when the camera's more front heavy is you need to move that camera backwards um, to balance it properly. And what the issue that I was running into is the batteries, um, when the camera was panning upwards, the batteries would actually hit the back arm of the gimbal. Um, and so you couldn't actually pan the camera up. It would always just have to be level, um, which is a problem. Like when you have a gimbal a lot of the time, you know, especially if you want to go under slung or get lower shots like that handle needs to come up, that arm needs to come up. Um, and you can't get away with just having the camera totally flat and holding the gimbal, you know, at, you know, 90 degrees level all the time. Um, and so I was like, okay, I need to find a solution for this. And I did. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. Um, the saving grace with the red Komodo is that it has dual battery slots. And so I knew that um, one, side of the one side of the camera didn't necessarily need to have a battery on it. And so I kind of got thinking about it and I was like, okay, how can I balance this thing using one battery? Um, and that, can that buy me the extra room that I need? Um, and so I found the solution. So basically the setup that I'm running right now is I have the Komodo with the battery on the, if you're looking at the camera um, from the back, I have the left hand side, that battery is on and the right hand side is off. Um, and so I only have one battery and then I have the camera slid all the way over to that left side. Um, and so when you tilt the camera, because that right battery is not attached, it can freely swing up and down. Um, it can freely tilt up and down. And so that enables the camera to have a full range of movement um, as long as you move that camera all the way over to that one side. The issue with that is that's not very good for balancing the camera. When it's all that weight is on that one side and you have a battery on that side, um, the camera does not balance very well. Um, and I mean, the Ronin S is very, very powerful, and so I was able to power it up and have the camera, you know, balanced for a bit, but that's not very good for the motors, and you're just putting unneeded strain, your battery is gonna die faster on the gimbal, um, as well as it's just gonna add to having a shorter lifespan on the gimbal as well. And so I wanted to find a better solution for that, so what I was able to do is go on Amazon and find some counterweights. And you can see right here on the gimbal, I have these counterweights that are attached to uh, the sidearm. And so basically what that enabled me to do is offset that weight that the camera um, had by swinging all the way to that uh, left-hand side. By putting counterweights on the right-hand side, I was able to fully balance that camera back to where it should be. Um, and so now I have a fully functioning uh, Red Komodo on the original Ronin, um, and it works great. Um, there are no balance issues. I can pan the camera wherever I want. I can go under slung, uh, whatever I want to do. I can do it and I don't run into it hitting anywhere um, and it works seamlessly. Now, the other aspect that I kind of added to it is um, when you have the red Komodo, the display is on the top. The, the onboard display is built on top of the Komodo body. 
And when you're running on a gimbal, that kind of sucks sometimes because if you wanna get higher shots or even just shots at eye level, it's very hard to see what is going on. Um, and so for me, I knew that I needed to figure out some sort of solution for a display that would be attached to the Ronin. So I was able to get a bit of a longer SDI cable here and the uh, uh, red Komodo control cable is uh, long enough as well to reach down to this display that I mounted. And so luckily with the Ronin, uh, you can actually buy accessories that mount to the side of it. A lot of gimbals come with that these days, um, but it's a great tool, it's awesome. And that enabled me to basically get this little arm um, that allows you to mount a monitor to it. So for me, I was able to mount the Indy 7 and have my cables running down and it works great. Um, the only scenario where I would say that it uh, is a little challenging is if you're wanting to get uh, shots on the roll axis. So that's one of the features of the Ronin S. I don't use it a lot. I don't think there's a lot of applications for it. But if that's something that you use, you might have trouble with that is uh, the Ronin has a setting where basically you can have the camera facing forward, but it'll fully rotate um, as if the camera is, you know, spinning uh, throughout the shot. And so it's a cool effect. I don't think it's a very common effect. Uh, and I definitely don't use it a lot, but you'd run into issues with that simply because you have to have wires attached with the monitor. Um, and so if you have it rolling, obviously that's gonna lead to issues and that's gonna tangle. And yeah, it's not gonna be a good combination. Uh, but if you wanted to combat that, all you would need to do is just unattach the monitor and just run the Komodo on its own. And I don't believe you would run into any issues. I haven't really tried it out, so don't take my word for it. I'm not sure if the battery would uh, it would hit at any areas, but I'm assuming that it would be fine. So maybe you can try it yourself and see if that's something that works for you. A feature that I found really useful having the ND7 is that it will auto rotate your display depending on the orientation that you have it. And so similar to an iPhone where if you flip the phone, the screen will actually rotate and kind of adjust accordingly when you're playing a video or showing a photo or something like that. Um, and so this display does something very similar where, you know, right now to mount it, I have to mount it upside down. Um, and But that's not a problem. I don't have to go into settings and, you know, flip the display every time I, you know, use my Ronin, it just automatically detects that it's upside down and flips the display for you, which is very, very convenient. The only downside to using a camera like the Komodo with the Ronin is that you don't actually have camera control um, available because there's no USB-C port um, on the Komodo. And so typically with something like the GH5 or maybe a Canon or a Sony, uh, there's actually a cord that plugs in right here on the gimbal and you can run it to your camera um, via USB-C and it will basically allow you to use the record button on the uh, on the Ronin to, to trigger uh, start and stop recording. You don't have that anymore. Um, also the, the follow focus wheel is kind of out of commission uh, because you don't have that USB-C. And so uh, features like that you can't really use on the Ronin, which sucks a little bit. Um, but that's where the Indy 7 comes in useful. I'm able to trigger start and stop recording from the monitor itself instead of having to reach up to the camera every time that I want to do it. Um, and then when it comes to focus, I mean, you're not really getting that back. The only way that you could uh, get that is to somehow hook up a system with a wireless follow focus um, mounted on the Ronin as well. Uh, which I don't do. And I, in some cases, just rely on the autofocus um, on the Komodo, which isn't the best, but it definitely works in some situations. Um, the other alternative is just, you know, manually set your uh, focus distance on the lens itself, and then try to keep a similar distance to your subject. Uh, I'm used to that. The, the GH5 has really crappy autofocus, and so I'm used to having to manually do everything like that. Um, and I also just trust it over autofocus in a lot of scenarios. And so to me, that's not that big of a downside, but I know to some people that might be a big thing to get used to. Um, but I would say, yeah, having the monitor uh, like the Indy 7 really helps. Uh, downside to that though, is you can't actually touch point focus on the Indy 7, or at least I haven't been able to figure out a way to do it. Um, you can only set a touch point um, on the display on the Komodo, uh, which is a bit annoying. I really wish that uh, in a firmware update or something like that, they would add a feature where you can actually just touch on the monitor for the red Komodo control where you want it to focus um, with your autofocus. That would be a huge, huge selling point for me um, if I was buying this setup new again. 
because uh, I was a bit disappointed that you weren't able to do that. And it just makes life a little bit harder when you're in a shoot. And especially if you're trying to go fast, you have to, you know, you're pressing record or setting your settings, pressing record and, you know, trying to hit your autofocus point on top of the camera that's mounted on the gimbal. Like it's just not an ideal setup. And so I would find that I would always have to, you know, set my focus point and then just kind of mentally make a note of where that focus point is and then try to keep the focus in that same framing as I was doing my movements. And so a bit convoluted, I really wish there was an easier way to do that. Um, so Small HD and Red, if you're listening, can you guys team up and make that happen? That would be great. And I think that would really make the camera a lot more usable um, when you're using it on something like this as a single man operation, um, because I don't have someone pulling focus for me. And so, you know, my hands are tied a little bit in that way. And so this is the best setup that I've been able to make work. So that is how I go about mounting my Red Komodo to the original Ronin S. Um, if you found this video helpful, go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. That helps me to know that you want to see more content like this. Um, if you have an idea for a future video or something that you have a question about, leave it in the comment section and I'll either answer it right there or I'll make a video about it in the future. I really wanna help equip you guys, everyone watching. I wanna make sure that you are getting content that is helpful to you. So let me know. Thank you for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.